Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today we're gonna to do a fun video on how to glaze a piece with a little bit different of a product. It's not glaze, but it gives us the same effect as glaze. And I have found personally that it works a little easier. Uh, I get a lot of questions about glazing versus waxing because a lot of people have run into the fact that glaze, once you put it on, isn't very workable. And that is true, especially if you don't top coat your piece after painting it, that glaze kind of just goes right in and doesn't move around very nicely. So if you're using traditional glaze, keep in mind that top coating your piece will give you the best workability of that glaze. But today we're gonna to use a product that I have used several times to give me that glaze effect, but it's not glaze. So what am I talking about? This is the Fusion Stain and Finishing Oil. This color is ebony. It comes in several different colors. I have used this several times. And why would I use a stain to give me a glaze effect? Well, this stain in particular is a really unique stain in the fact that it's not only a stain, but it is a finishing oil in one, so it's a top coat built into it. So it will give you a piece added protection for one. For two, it's got an open time of about 15 minutes. And what does that mean? It means that the minute you put this on your piece, it's not going to be soaking into the piece and not be workable. It, you've got that open time of 15 minutes to work it around, wipe it off, put it on. So I have found that it works so nicely when you're working on a piece that you want that glazed effect on. So I've done this, like I said, several times. I've never done a video on it. So I thought I have a piece in the shop today I'm going to work on and it would be an excellent opportunity to show you guys how this works. This, um, this stain here only comes in this size right now. I wish they came in bigger sizes and the price point for it is a little expensive for what you get. However, this is one of my favorite products to use not only for blending, I do a blended stain look, um, but also using it for this. So it's kind of a multi-purpose or multi-function product that I really get a lot out of using it. So I don't mind paying uh, the price. This runs, let me see, I think it's $19.99, $24.99, I'm sorry, $24.99, and this is a half pint size. Now a little does go a long way. So um, it is a product that you don't have to worry about going through a ton of it, especially for this type of technique. Anyway, enough talking, let's go ahead and dive in. Let me show you the piece that we're gonna do this on today, and then I will show you how I get this look and what I use. So this is the piece here. This is a perfect piece to give it a fun glazed effect because look at all of this roping here. This is what we're gonna accent today. The roping down the sides and on the top and on the bottom, and then the feet are also very beautiful. So we're gonna use this today on all these areas. Now, there's two ways that you can apply. You can do it over the whole entire piece and then wipe it off, or you can just do the certain accents, whatever is gonna work for you. So what I think I have a vision for this piece, what I would like to do is I'm gonna go ahead and do the entire top and then wipe off where I don't want my stain. And then I'm gonna do my roping and things like that. After I take a look at it, I'll decide whether or not I wanna do the drawers. Because the drawers are a very flat front and don't have that embellishment, not sure if I'm gonna to wanna to do that or not. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and get my gloves on. When you're working with stain, just my recommendation, wear gloves because getting stain out of skin can be kind of challenging. I see people do it all the time and it just makes me cringe because I go, oh, I know how hard it is to get paint out of your skin and stain even harder. So I like to wear my gloves. I get two different size brushes for a piece this size because what I'm going to do is take the stain and go over the entire top of the piece. So I want one that's going to give me a little more coverage. This one's going to work great for just the trim area. So I've got two. And then what I like to use to wipe back my stain are blue shop towels. I find that they work really easy for me. They're lint free, so 
They don't get any of that stuff in there. I used to use Bag of Rags, which was from Lowe's, and they're just basically t-shirts that are all cut up. Uh, but I was finding that they absorbed too much of the product and they left behind that lint. So I switched over to using the Blue Shop towels, which I really like. And then the key here is, not just wiping it back, but wiping it back with a wet rag. Wet rag of what? Mineral spirits. And you're thinking to yourself, wait a minute, you're gonna put mineral spirits on a freshly painted piece. How is that not going to take off the paint? Well, first of all, I this has been sitting for about 48 hours, more than plenty of time. Um, to go ahead and do your stain or glaze effect and then also lightly you're going to wipe back with a damp cloth. I'm not pouring mineral spirits all over the piece. I'm getting a damp cloth and wiping it back with that and you're going to see why I do that because it's going to take up more of the stain in certain areas and leave behind where I don't wipe back as aggressively um, with more stain and that's the look that I want. I did a piece not too long ago with this and it just had such a fantastic um, look as an end result that I was like this is how I'm doing it from now on using the mineral spirits that is. So anyway I know it seems a little scary to put mineral spirits on a piece that you just painted but I'm telling you it works. So let's go ahead and get okay, started. So one of the reasons that I'm gonna go ahead and put stain over the entire top of this painted piece is because sometimes when you do a glaze effect and you only highlight, it's very stark and it doesn't look blended. And what I want is to have a blended look, less on top, more around here. So I know it seems a little funky, but trust me, I've done this a couple of times and it comes out great every time. So I'm literally, and here's the thing, as I'm putting this stain on, I am not looking to get perfect coverage. You see how this is all, you know, sparse in certain areas, totally okay. Because we're wiping it back anyway. So that's not super important um, on this top here. So not to worry, what I'm trying to do is just get it covered. Now again, this stain is an awesome stain because this can sit for 15 minutes and it isn't getting, um, it's not setting up. So it allows you to work with it. So what I'm doing here, there's so many different little crevices on this embellishment is I'm really trying to get in here. And what I wanna do is not push too hard because you know it's gonna drip all over my piece, right? So I want it where I want it and I don't want it where I don't want it. So you kinda of have to kinda, of, what I do is just kinda of dab it on. And as you can see, we're just kind of dabbing in all these now, different areas and now what what will happen is when I wipe this back if this is not what I want I can go back and add more of the product so that's the key that makes this really a nice finish is that once you put it on it's it will dry permanently of course but because you've got some good working time with it um, it, it's not like oh my god I put it on and now I, I can't get it off unless I paint over it or you know, scrub hard. We don't wanna scrub. We do have a freshly painted piece here. So the idea is not to scrub it whatsoever. And when I'm wiping back, I used the word aggressively earlier and keep in mind, there's nothing about this process that you wanna do aggressively, okay? Whether that's putting it on or taking it off because you will rub the paint off if you work it hard enough. And that's not what we're trying to do here. We don't wanna take our paint off we just want to give this beautiful effect. Ah, now look, I just blue bowled right here on the drawer. I don't know if you guys can see that on camera. I already have my wet mineral spirits towel. And look at that, took it right off like an eraser because I don't want a dot on my drawer, right? So yeah, you see how easy that is to work with? So I'm gonna continue down the line here, covering all this up. And then we're gonna come back and I'm gonna show you the wipe off process. All right, so you can see this area here, all of the rope trim is covered really, really well. And because I wanted to get in all those crevices because whatever I wipe away, I want to be left behind in all those little crevices. So I did go a lot heavier and I'm just going back now and seeing where I need a little more 
but I did go heavier on the trim area because I want more left behind. And as you can see, I haven't wiped anything away. This open time of this stain allowed me to go ahead and get on everywhere I needed to be without having to worry about wiping it back right away. All right, so now I've set the stain down. I've got my cloth. As you can see, I'm not soaked. I have some mineral spirits. Now I might need more, but I'm gonna go ahead and start wiping it back. So I'm gonna start with my top. And you might have to change rags because you are gonna start to get a lot of product on there. And literally, I'm just wiping in the natural grain direction. I'm gonna get a little more, because see how much I'm loading up that product? I wanna get a little more of a clean rag with mineral spirits on it and go to town. So, you see how easy this is being removed? And the pressure on my hand is not heavy, you guys. Remember, you're keeping it light because you do not want to take off the paint. What we're concentrating on is taking off the stain. Okay, so that's enough of what I want taken off. So now what I'm gonna do is get a dry shop towel and go back over this and take off the remaining of what I don't want. And you are gonna see that it will have that slight, as you can see, it's got a slight haze to it in um, the video and I'm gonna show you up close because sometimes it's hard to see on camera with the lighting in here, I get a lot of light. And one thing I will tell you is you do go through quite a few because you wanna go back with a dry, clean cloth and get off all of those areas that you don't want. So a lot of times you do have to use, and that's why these shop towels are great because you start with a new fresh clean one and you go back over it wiping off what you don't want left behind. So what's happening here on the top, I'm literally changing it, the paint, just a hair, just a shade, so that it will mix and mesh with the rest of the piece. There's gonna be a little bit of this stain left behind in the grain of the wood, and that is totally okay, that's what I want. You see how I'm doing this motion here? It's because I've got a lot over here on the edge and I wanna get it off and it's okay. I can do that. I can go back and forth. Again, my pressure on my hand is super light. I'm trying to make sure that I don't go heavy at all. As Soon as I'm done with this top section, I'm gonna show you up close how it looks so that you guys can get an idea. Now look, I just made a mess, right? So I'm gonna take my wet, and wipe it off. So the key to this is making sure that you have a clean cloth because what's gonna happen is if it's not clean, it's gonna leave behind you know, these areas here that you hit it with by mistake. So I have another one that's a damp clean cloth so that I can get off some of this. And you just kind of go until you figure out what look you like. All right, now we're gonna hit the trim. The trim, all I'm gonna do is wipe it away and literally leave the rest of it most likely. So I'm gonna go down each side. I might have to make a couple of passes because we do load up pretty quickly on the rag. So I just turn and twist, go back over it till I start to see the look and color I want. You can go down like this, whatever your grooves are, you can get really in there. Right now, what I'm doing is making sure I'm wiping in wherever I want my product, where I might have missed it. And that is it. So you'll know when it's time to switch out your rag, you'll get pretty heavily loaded and you'll realize that it's not doing the job you want it to do by taking it away. So I really want this color to be more standout than the top. And I'm gonna show you how good this looks in just a few minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep wiping this down and then we'll come back and take a look at it together when it's all done on the top. Here we are. So I went ahead, it took me about five minutes to wipe it back. I just did it off camera because you saw the process and no need to see me keep going. Plus I kept having to go in front of the camera. So you really don't need to see me in front of the camera. Anyway, this is what I have come up with for my finish on the top. So as you can see, 
really close. It gets caught in the wood grain. That's the look I want. It is extremely light. Uh, and then here on the sides, see how heavy? But I went ahead and wiped it back. So I can continue to keep wiping back for a little bit. And that's what I kind of have been doing is I've been going back and forth and kind of seeing where I wanted it heavier. But I really wanted this to be really heavy. And I really wanted that black to sit in that groove right there and really separate. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep doing, I'm gonna do the sides now. This stain and finishing oil, when left like this in a heavier state, is going to go ahead and take, I think it's about four hours to dry. I pretty much would let this sit until tomorrow before I do anything with it because I just always do when using this product, so. But isn't that beautiful, you guys? Look at the difference. I'm gonna back up just so you guys can see the difference between the braiding on the top and the braiding on the bottom, how much more that stands out and how beautiful it looks. And again, that's the top. So now it's not so stark and it's got that nice blended look. I'll show you one side just so you guys can get the idea. Working with a surface um, that, you know, is most likely gonna be dripping all over. I just wanna show you guys how um, it is not hard to do because some people might think well a tabletop is really easy to do you make that look easy But then I go to the sides and that is not as easy. So let me just show you So we're gonna do the same thing and again, you can tell I don't have a ton of product on my brush here uh, Because otherwise I'm gonna be like drip factory all over the place and I don't want to do that Obviously, I don't want to make a mess as you see I am not working with drop cloth today because I'm kind of used to doing this process. Um, so I know after doing it a few times how to manipulate the product so I don't end up with it all over the place. So here is the final, as you can see, the fronts, the top, and the sides have very, very little of the stain left behind. I left a little more on the top than I did anywhere else just because I liked that look, but here it is here, and this is the other side. So I will show you when it's on my staging area final in the um, very right, end guys, of the that video. That is it. We're at the end of the video. I'm gonna go ahead and showcase the piece. I'll do a walk around so you can see the entire thing and I'll do some still photos as well. It took me all of maybe about 30 to 45 minutes to do the entire piece the way I wanted it done. You saw the two sections that we did on camera. I finished the rest off camera so that you guys didn't have to sit and watch the exact same process over and over. What I will tell you is it is a process and any creative process takes time. Some of us take longer than others because we step back, we look, we don't like it, we go back, we fix it. So it's a total look that is up to the way you want it to look or if you're doing it for a client the way they want it to look. I find that it's really easy to work with this product as a glaze, even though it is not a glaze, it is a stain. I use it for staining bare wood all the time. I use it for a blended stain look and I use it as a glaze. I have tried several glazes over the years and for me, I just found that this using this product gave me the same effect and it was really easy to work with because of the open time that it has. So again, it is the Fusion Mineral Paint line and it's the stain and finishing oil. You can get it in several different colors so you can create all different types of looks and then you also have a stain in your um, arsenal as well. So there's that. So it wasn't hard. What I will tell you is mineral spirits does stink. Uh, so work in a well ventilated area. Also wear a mask or a respirator if smells tend to bother you. Whenever I work with even paints, I'm wearing my RZ mask. Um, it's a great mask. Unfortunately, you can't get them right now due to the coronavirus. They are only doing medical 
um, field where they're selling to the medical field. I happen to have mine for a while, so I'm good. But you can get other masks and or ventilators, so make sure when you're working with oil or urethane products, mineral spirits, things that might tend to make you more sensitive, uh, wear good respirators. Right. So if you have any questions on the process, make sure you put them down below or any positive comments. I love hearing from you guys and I will always get back to you. Thank you so much for watching today, you guys. Thank you for being subscribers. Keep subscribing so you can get all of my videos in the future and stay safe and healthy and I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye. All right, so here is the final piece. I'm gonna do a walk around and then I'll come back and do a real up close for you guys so you can take a look and see. But how pretty that came out. All I did on the drawer fronts, I did decide to go ahead and do them. And what I did was more of just an inking effect around the inside perimeter of the each drawer. And then I wiped that back. So I didn't want to glaze the whole entire drawer. So I just did that to tie it in. So here is that. Here's the top and the sides so you can see it's really heavy in the detail and then i just kind of blended it and left it um, in certain areas on the sides and the top so there it is